Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you for being here tonight with us. Let's give our inductees a round of applause. Um, this is part of our year-long celebration of the 25th anniversary of the National Center for Simulation. So um, it is with great honor that I introduce our new um, chairman and or CEO and president of the National Center for Simulation, Mr. George Cheros. Thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate it. First of all, I'd like to express my thanks for your service to NCS and the modeling and simulation community. In the same calendar year, you are serving as NCS chairman, chair of the NCS golf tournament, and also the chair of the 2019 NCS. There's an old saying, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. You're a perfect example. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 2019 NCS Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Before I get the program started, I would like to take a moment to let all of you know what a privilege it is to be a part of tonight's ceremonies as we honor this year's inductees. Now let's recognize our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor is the University of Central Florida. Thank you. valuable sponsors, and please hold your applause and we'll thank them all at once. MathWorks, Atos, Hitachi, Disney, SunTrust, Coal Engineering Services, The Quarter, Orange County Convention Center, Lighthouse, and Bank of America. Thank you sponsors. We cannot thank you. We also have some special guests to recognize, and please hold, again, please hold your applause till I introduce them all. Um, from Orange County Commission, Honorable Christine Moore, District 2 Commissioner. Okay, yep. Also from Orange County Commission, the Honorable Maribel Gomez Cordero, District 4. Are you here, Maribel? Okay, representing Senator Rick Scott is Barry Cotton. London Rotundo is representing Senator Marco Rubio. And this one I know is here. Eric Ushkowitz is here representing Orange County. And from UCF, the newly elected chairwoman of the Board of Trustees from UCF, the Arnold Bev C. Homegrown in this industry. Finally, representing the Team Orlando Commands, Captain Tim Hill, Commander of Naval Air Warfare Center, Training Systems Division, and Naval Support Activity, Orlando. <laughs> and his wife, Lara. Um, I, don't believe, uh, I don't believe Colonel Lewis Lara made it tonight from the Marine Corps. Uh, Colonel Robert Epstein, Commanding Officer, Air Force Agency for Modeling and Simulation. <laughs> Dr. James Blake, former Program Executive Officer, Simulation Training and Instrumentation. <laughs> and Colonel Retired Walt Gates, former Program Manager, Training Systems, U.S. Marine Corps. Captain Wes Naylor down, I do not see him. If he's here, please stand. We also have uh, Captain Retired Bill roto Ritter and Captain Retired Andy Moeller. All three, all of them were former commanders at Mock DSD and NSA Orlando. <laughs> and finally, we have some previous Hall of Fame inductees with us here tonight from the class of 2015. Henry Okraski, Senior Executive Service, retired U.S. Navy, and his wife, Judy. <laughs> and former retired James Shifflin, U.S. Army. <laughs> They're coming <up. laughs> From the class of 2017, Beverly C., previous introduced as the UCF Board <laughs> From the class of 2018, Dr. James Blake, previously introduced, and his wife Sharon. Thank you, Thank you all for joining us.
apologize if I missed any elected officials, Steve Orlando leaders, or former Hall of Fame inductees. If I did, please stand and we'll recognize you now. I, I mentioned Jimmy. I've been hitting the head a lot. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> the NCS Hall of Fame was established in 2014 to recognize pioneers in our industry whose passion, dedication, and perseverance laid the foundation for today's multi billion dollar simulation industry. Modeling and simulation has really made its mark on Central Florida, our state, and our nation. The technology and applications, which in many ways were inspired, developed, or spearheaded by these 25 individuals represented on the wall, and now these three inductees, have provided excellent tools and training support to allow our warfighters to encounter almost any type of situation imaginable, not to mention the countless lives that have been saved through simulation training. Now, after five decades of growth and development, our region is known as the epicenter of the world for modeling simulation and training. Although simulation was primarily developed in the defense and space industries, we have embraced the opportunities for the transfer of this proven technology and watched it expand to a number of other segments in our economy. Segments to include education, medical, energy, transportation, manufacturing, architecture, engineering, construction, digital media, serious games, and cyber, just to name a few. The future is as boundless as evidenced by the growth into new arenas like artificial intelligence and extended reality. And so, from humble beginnings, simulation now touches virtually every aspect of our daily lives. We are here tonight to induct three more pioneers into the NCS Hall of Fame and to recognize how each of them, in their own way, has made contributions to advancing the state of the art of modeling and simulation. We have two distinguished educators and researchers in Dr. Peter Hancock and Dr. Randall Shoemaker, and an entertainment and tourism industry visionary in the field of simulation, Michael Shans. So let's get started. To present our first inductee, Dr. Lee Lacey is a longtime NCS board member <coughs> and director of programs at Disney Corporation. Please welcome Lee to present and induct Dr. Peter Hancock. It's a real honor tonight to introduce Professor Peter Hancock. He's here with his wife, Dr. Frances Hancock, and their two daughters. We're very happy to have them. Uh, tonight's honor for him is another in a long series of honors that he's received. He's had a very long and distinguished career with a lot of awards, a lot of recognitions, and this is an, another one of those. Uh, professor Hancock is the UCF Provost Distinguished Research Professor he serves the Department of Psychology, the Institute of Simulation Training, and the Department of Civil and Engineering, Civil and Environmental Engineering, and the Department of Industrial Engineering and Management Systems. So he's made a lot of contributions across the university. He's also been named by UCF as a University Pegasus Professor and a University Trustee Chair. He currently directs the MIT2 Research Laboratories and is the Associate Director of the Center for Applied Human Factors in Aviation. A lot of his research through the years has been in transportation, including both uh, ground transportation and airline safety. His contributions are evident by the number of publications he's been involved with. He's authored over 700 refereed scientific articles and publications, and he's been involved with writing and editing 15 books. One of his most recent books is titled, Hope Springs Eternal, The Psychology of Cognitive Deception which mixes his love for history with his expertise in psychology. Very interesting topic. He's been very successful as a research, researcher. He's attracted funding for his projects, over $17 million in funding that he's received from sources, including the US Navy, Army, Air Force, and numerous federal, state, and industrial agencies. Uh, if we were to read his complete CV, we'd be here all night. But uh, we're going to read the plaque that we have for him over here. The first one. Got that one. It says, in recognition of Dr. Peter Hancock, a pioneering professor and researcher for his profound contributions to modeling and simulation. His early work on modeling physiology systems paved the way for computer-based simulations of human response in extreme environments. 
This work was applied by the U.S. Army to create limits for exposure to adverse thermal conditions. Dr. Hancock's work for the U.S. Air Force on dynamic function allocation helped in the founding of the Augmented Cognition Society. His most profound contributions concern ground, res ground transportation research, in which he was the first to link together two ground-based full vehicle simulation facilities to evaluate driver response and collision conditions. The insights accrued helped save lives. He also contributed significantly to modeling and simulation education, directing and graduating the first successful UCF modeling and simulation PhD candidate who conducted innovative and foundational work on the human aspects of augmented reality. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Professor Peter Hancock. Microcomputer-based systems 
and software and language development, just to name a few. In 1984, he spoke at the Joint Services Working Group, I think it is part of our industry, um, it's possibly um, part of FinSec now, um, about artificial intelligence and maintenance. And he talked uh, to that group about how artificial intelligence could save the military money and uh, also improve avionics maintenance. His work with the Naval Research Laboratory in human-computer interaction resulted in substantial gains for virtual reality and simulation. As director for the Institute for Simulation and Training and the New School of Modeling and Simulation at UCF, he's driving research focus as well as preparing our next generation workforce in modeling simulation. At UCF, he teamed with other leaders to help bring the Veterans Administration similar to Orlando, and then augmented their workforce with his simulation staff. In the last 15 years, he's facilitated increased external funding more than fourfold for IST, in spite of decreased budgets. And during his tenure, Dr. Shoemaker broadened the scope of the Institute, and in many and, and he also uh, incorporated diverse areas of research and simulation. He supported, in many cases, led the efforts to expand MSNT education at the university, which now offers bachelor's, master's, and PhD program, as well as modeling and simulation certification program. As an educator, he taught computer and software courses throughout the United States and Europe for George Washington University, and at UCF, his professorships include industrial engineering and management science and electrical science and computer engineering. Congratulations, Dr. Shoemaker. I'll read your introduction now. In recognition of Dr. Randall Paul Shoemaker for his work in modeling and simulation, <coughs> education and research, and for leading the growth and diversification of modeling and simulation at the University of Central Florida Institute for Simulation and Training, his leadership resulted in not only the growth at the Institute, but also the establishment of the School of Modeling, Simulation, and Training at UCF. His strong advocacy for advancing human-robot communications resulted in valuable technology for the training and simulation community. Earlier in his career, as a Navy senior executive at the Naval Research Laboratory, Dr. Shoemaker led research in a wide range of computing networking, cybersecurity, and communications disciplines. His research was instrumental <clears throat> excuse me, in automating aircraft support systems, including the electromagnetic catapult, and in launch, recovery, and visual landing, landing aids for sea-based aircraft. Dr. Shoemaker is honored for, is honored for his distinguished work in pioneering simulation for testing and exploratory development for his contributions to diversifying IST's research and the use of simulation, and for his contributions to establishing the modeling simulation master's and doctorate degree programs at the School of Modeling and Simulation at UCF. Squeeze in just a little bit. Has been to get 
modeling and simulation for training recognized as a profession, not just mm -hmm. something a bunch of miscellaneous people do. And further proving that is we have a master's and PhD program, close to 600 graduates, master's and PhD degrees, working in many other agencies now, starting their own companies, working for other companies. So I think we have achieved that. Uh, we even got declared to be a school. Uh, so I thank the university for that. Uh, took quite a while and uh, not always uh, high speed recognition, but we did it and, and it exists there, so thanks. I want to put one little anecdote for the electromagnetic catapult that you put in. This is my little joke, really. I was in that era as a program manager at Aircraft Technology, and I started the 6-2 project that ultimately led to the electromagnetic catapult that's on the ships now. So I started 25 years ago a project that's now on the ship. That's how long it takes to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, I am the only program manager from that era that had a president say, rip it out and put in steam. <laughs> 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 so, Congratulations to you and thank you for all you've done for UCF and the National Center for Simulation. We appreciate the continuing support and partnership that NCS has with the University of Central Florida and we are thankful to have UCF as our presenting sponsor to honor both Dr. Shoemaker and Dr. Hancock. To speak on behalf of the university, I'm pleased to present the Honorable Bev C., Chair of the Board of Trustees of the University of Central Florida and a member of the NCS Hall of Fame Class of 2017. Thank you, George. I really appreciate this opportunity to highlight two of UCF's outstanding education and research leaders. These individuals represent UCF's leading role in modeling and simulation, an area that is internationally recognized for addressing the problems of the future today, while developing the talent we need to take on these challenges. This is where UCF shines as an engine of innovation, fueling new ideas and jobs by bringing together people across the spectrum of engineering, science, and social disciplines. As members of Central Florida's community, UCF faculty, students, and researchers foster our economic success and national security. I'm particularly proud of this evening's recognition because it shows the impact of modeling and simulation and what it has on impacting and saving lives. And it honors individuals from a university that has committed itself to building a better and safer world. Thank you and congratulations to our honorees. Finally, welcome Dan Ketchum, the CEO and founder of Technology Associates and Products. Dan has volunteered at many NCS events since launching his company in 2015 and is a most welcome addition to the NCS board. Presenting the induction of Michael Shans, please welcome Dan Ketchum. see a hidden man pulling switches and levers, and begin to understand the secret of the great and powerful Oz, they are told, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to pay attention to a man normally behind a curtain. In fact, we're going to talk about him, we're going to celebrate him, and we are going to put him in our Hall of Fame. Walt Disney World Resort is known throughout the world as the premier destination for family fun. More than 50 million people enjoy the four theme parks each year, and nearly every one of them, in some way, is impacted by the work of our honoree, Disney's three-time recipient of the Imagineering Innovation Award and a Disney Partners in Excellence Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Michael Shantz. Now, you won't find him walking the park dressed as French Charming, <laughs> though he is pretty charming. <laughs> you won't find him directing traffic in the parking lot, you won't find him checking the restraints at the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and you won't find him ushering guests efficiently through the parks. But Michael Shantz, Disney's Director of Technology and Analysis, and most definitely the man behind a lot of curtains, 
has built an amazing team of over 100 multi-discipline professionals who use modeling and simulation in new, exciting, and inventive ways. To increase ride capacity. We all enjoy shorter wait times, right? <laughs> to increase the maintainability and reliability of, tra of attractions. To accelerate the design of rides. And to enhance many of the park's most magical experiences, such as Test Track, Mission Space, Toy Story Mania, Expedition Everest, and that Tower of China. His team uses modeling and simulation to improve logistics efficiencies and to apply leading edge concepts such as digital twin, big data, advanced analytics, and predictive maintenance with such innovation that the vendors supplying the underlying technologies for these, many of them here tonight to share Michael's accomplishment, consult with him and seat him on their advisory boards. Oh, and in their spare time, Michael's team modeled the entire park complex to find ways to make every aspect of guest experience more enjoyable. As impressive as that may be, Michael is not all something all the time. His many accomplishments, such as writing missile tracking algorithms for Texas Instruments, <laughs> advising companies like MathWorks and Rockwell Automation, and holding a patent for, ready for this, iterative packing optimization. That all started with, I mean, I think it's obvious, right? A performing arts background. <laughs> Even today, he uses music to create bridges between creative and engineering teams. Simply amazing. Michael is joined tonight by many friends and colleagues, and also his family. His wife, Kathy, sons Jonathan and Jason, his stepdaughter, Sarah, and stepson, Brian, mother and father-in-law, Jim and Joanne Dudley, and his mother, Jen. His sister, Cheryl, brother-in-law, William, and daughter, Jackie, could not be here but they are here with us in spirit. We enshrine in our Hall of Fame the pioneers, the innovators, and the breakthrough artists of modeling and simulation. Tonight, Michael Schantz joins the illustrious group of difference makers in this hall. This is the inscription on his plaque. In recognition of Michael Allen Schantz, an innovative thought leader, promoter, and practitioner of modeling and simulation technologies that bring design efficiencies and quality to the modern industrial automation and machinery world and the Internet of Things. As Director of Technology and Analysis of Walt Disney World and a passionate promoter of emerging simulation technologies such as Digital Twin and Operational and Information Technologies, he solved the difficult challenges associated with predictive maintenance, minimizing operational downtime and reducing inventory and logistical costs, while at the same time improving customer experiences. Michael introduced simulation into Walt Disney Parks and Attractions. His industry-renowned resort simulation analysis team developed detailed mathematical and physics models for transportation, ride and animatronic systems, custom software and network applications, and robotics. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to present to you our newest inductee into the National Center for Simulation Hall of Fame, Mr. Michael Shams. Yeah. here right now I have to follow them right and talk about what's going on here well first of all Dan thank you for that I want to thank George uh, who I've gotten to know a little bit more here recently on the board for this tremendous honor um, it is really it's humbling uh, about everything that I've had a chance to be involved with this I know I'm likely to miss someone but I actually did bring a piece of paper and I am going to walk through this to make sure I haven't forgotten anybody but I'm sure I will so I apologize in advance for those people I've missed um, first, I want to say thank you to Bev C, uh, who was determined to make this a reality. And she kept calling me, even though I was like really busy, busy, so I'm sorry. Bev, I did try to get back to you whenever I could. Uh, Dan Kenshin, who uh, did a great job in tonight's work, sorry, guiding me through all this. Special thank you to all my family that's in attendance and those here in spirit. Uh, also, I want to thank my vendor partners and their wavering support to help make this all possible. MathWorks, 
uh, Atos, Rockwell, and Hitachi. Many of these folks are here tonight. Please get to know them. Uh, I can tell you they're not only wonderful people, but they uh, have been with us through some really challenging times when we've been able to solve some tough problems. But then I also have my special guest from Disney, uh, Mike Labonge, uh, who is not only my friend, but my mentor, who has done so much to help in my career. Dennis Lynn is my VP that actually helped establish the first simulation uh, 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 role in, uh, in this space and said, you know, hey, uh, do you want to do this? And I said, I don't know. Uh, what will happen if I don't? Will somebody else lead it? Ooh, maybe I should lead this thing. <laughs> I should go ahead and I'm working for it. Um, so thank you for that. And also the opportunity for the tech analysis team. Mike Welch, who is manager of our simulation uh, team now, who somehow believed in me when I first got here. And I said we needed to move to model-based design methodology in 1997. And has been with me ever since. That really says something about the quality of that person that he could be around with that period of time. Uh, also, I want to thank Mike Piotek, who is also uh, one of our directors here. And it's great to have our entire executive staff from a design and engineering here. That is really touching to me. Um, and then I also had to put in here that Melody Cole, who is my first director here, who is a relative of Terry Cole, who is on the board, which I didn't know until just a month ago. Uh, <laughs> she helped establish some of the very first funding that we had for simulation. So, Melody, I don't see you, but I know you're here. But uh, thank you again for, uh, for doing that. And my wife, Kathy, who saw me in a state of brokenness at the loss of my first wife and helped pick me up from the pieces I was in and helped me move on. This night would not have been possible without all of you playing a part in bringing about the celebration. So often we're told you'll never be able to fill in the blanks. Right? How many people have been told that? I've met a lot of people in this group, right? Mm -hmm. You are unwavering in your commitment to try to get things done. I have watched all of you in that. And you've had to do it sometimes with people saying, you'll never be able to. So let me give you some examples. Uh, uh, my children have heard this quite a bit. Uh, my stepson, Brian, after a devastating motorcycle accident, decided to go and learn, uh, and go into engineering and hopefully design jets since he was never going to be able to fly them. Uh, he was, that's what he was going to do in, in the Marines, but he's now, this is what he's going to do. By the way, he is looking for a job after he graduates. <laughs> <laughs> right over there. <laughs> My uh, stepdaughter, Sarah, who just graduated from engineering school at the age of 33. Engineering school at the age of 33, while working as a waitress to put herself through school. Graduated from UCF. Thank you for UCF. Sure. These are nice. examples nice. of your outstanding. <laughs> My daughter Jackie, who can't be here tonight, came to her, but she's in residency in Miami uh, after graduating from medical school at FIU. Um, and, and she was told that, uh, you know, maybe she shouldn't think about this since she had to repeat her first year, but she didn't give up. My oldest son just received his doctorate in ministry, even though he was told in high school he should probably not attend college. So, Dr. Jonathan Shantz. <laughs> My son, uh, Jason, who graduated from MBA school from a school he was originally designed, den denied entrance to as an undergrad. And then there were constant times I heard this phrase, you'll never be able to do music and engineering, uh, teaching, masters of school, full-time job, and music director. By the way, don't do all those things at the same time. <laughs> um, you'll never be able to build a simulation of an image-based guidance system with that many lines of code. I bet many of you have heard that before. You'll never be able to build a riot simulation. You'll never be able to change how we do animated figure design. You'll never be able to get the company to change the way we do attraction design. You'll never be able to complete an analytics architecture with multiple vendors. Many people have genuine reasons for saying this phrase. Sometimes they are less genuine, as many of you know. In any case, we often have to make difficult choices moving forward when we sometimes feel we're on our own with a little support. We sometimes lean on our faith. I like to always remind myself, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. We often lean on others who also believe in us and guide us. That's why in order to accomplish seemingly impossible achievements, we must all work together, reaching across boundaries and tribal mindsets. I was at a Kirk Franklin concert recently, a legendary gospel musician, and his new uh, title for his uh, true word this year is called Long Live Love. I can't think of a better phrase for bringing, bridging great divides and how we can accomplish the impossible. He says, among other things, make your next chapter your best chapter. No greater love makes my heart beat. All I want to do is make you proud of me. Help me see like you, no matter what I go through. Everything's working for my good for always. Let's move together as one, believing we can achieve the impossible. 
After all, as Disney said, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. <laughs> Thank you again, and blessings to you all.